Let's get to the money relationship and the beliefs that so many people have. With all the opportunities that exist today, why haven't you reached your next level of income, life, and wealth? In most cases, we've been lied to. We've been told that if you find the right opportunity and you work hard, you can be successful. And that's simply not true. Millionaires, billionaires, and successful people have realized you need the foundation for wealth, the habits. And that's exactly what you'll be learning on the Millionaire Success Habits Podcast. All success starts here. Today, I want to talk about the money mindset and what money means to you, what it, what it can mean for you, and how to get more of it. Um, as simple as that sounds, sometimes, actually more than sometimes, in so many cases, the thoughts, the beliefs, the challenges, the frustrations, the worry about money are the exact thing that is, that there are things that are holding us back from gaining more of it. So I want to spend some time and go through what I believe will change your thoughts on money. And then at the end, towards the the second half, I want to go through ways to create more of it. So let's talk about money. Money is a weird thing to talk about to some people. We have this relationship with money. Like think about if we were a therapist, right? If we were at a therapist and like money was on one couch and and you were on the other and the therapist was there. Money is one of those things that you, 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 some people don't like it or afraid to think about it or don't want to talk about it too much. Uh, some people even think money may be bad or money is evil. While, simult- while simultaneously, it's the thing that causes the most stress and worry in their life. It's really crazy. It's like you desire it because it'll cause, it'll release pain, but at the same time, you're kind of pushing it away. So that's 30,000 foot. Let's dig in. But first, some cool stats I think you guys should Uh, you guys should look at. CNBC says finances are the leading cause of stress in a relationship. Uh, CNBC. Kansas State University did a study, and I'm just pulling little pieces out of a long article, but the top predictor of a divorce is arguing about money. Here's another stat. 76% of all Americans say that money is the leading cause of stress in their life. So if 76% of the people say money is the leading cause of stress in their life, what do you think the number one cause of heart disease, cancer, anxiety, stress, the worry, the, 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 the things that are crippling our community, our stress? And this report says 76% of people are, the most thing they're stressed about is money in their life. So again, here we go with that relationship. We... We, we despise it in so many cases where we get mad on how we can earn it. We get mad we don't have enough of all this stuff. While simultaneously, it's the one thing that can take away so much stress in our lives. So we're going to create a new relationship here in the next few minutes. And I'd really love for you to be open-minded. You know, sometimes we say, hey, I, I, I want you to think about this. Sometimes I will talk to people and they want the magic bullet, the magic pill, the magic keypad to hit that, that, is going to make them money overnight. The magic money machine. I, I, I've, hell, there's a lot of people on Facebook making money, selling the magic money machine, right? And the more I've been in this, in this game of helping this industry, of helping others achieve more success, more financial success, more stability, while simultaneously where I came from of having nothing in the evolution, the more I look at that, the more I see the evolution of it is, 80%, and I, I probably would have said 20%, then 30%, then for the older I get, I realize that 80% of, of what you need to make more money, to be more successful, to start your own business, or thrive in the one that you have, or take a side hustle or side business, or, or evolve through the ranks in the current job you have, or the sales position, or if you're a network marketer, the, the, the ability for you to go faster, quicker, and higher literally lies between here. I think 80% lies between here and the last 20% are the tactical strategies that you use, whether that's making money in real estate, like I teach so many of my students to do, or, or making money online, or making money with stocks, or making money in your own business or your own company, or selling information, or whatever it is that you do. I really believe the 20% is the end because if this isn't right, if the foundation isn't right, things just fall apart, things crow- crumble, thing you give up too soon, you get frustrated too easy, anxiety and overwhelm happen too fast, and then you back up and you retreat and go, maybe next time. And then, then you go for the next business or the next thing. I mean, how many times do you bounce and bounce and bounce thinking, this one will be the magical one, this one will be the magical one. No, without the core foundation for success, 
you could bounce around from job to job, business to business, opportunity to opportunity for your whole life. And I want that to stop. And that's why I'm so, I, I don't take uh, you guys being a part of this group lightly. I, I, I wanna share with you what I believe are the greatest strategies to get you to that next level of where you wanna go. So thank you for all the comments of the win. Um, okay, so let's, let's get to some, um, let's get to the money relationship and the beliefs that so many people have. And maybe some of these you don't have. So uh, let me go through four beliefs that I think are crippling if you have any ounce of it. And we wanna spin those today. So number one, money is scarce. We've all been told that money doesn't grow on trees. And what that is, is we feel that money is scarce, or in fact, uh, we live in a fear that it's gonna run out or gonna vanish. And, and we know that money doesn't vanish. Money's not going away. There's the same amount of money, if not more, around the world than there's ever been. It's not getting smaller. Think about that. Like, really think what I just said. Money is not shrinking, right? In fact, this year, in America alone, and I've said the stats, a lot of you have heard this, but because it boggles my mind, that there's 1,700 new millionaires being created every day in America. Think about that, 1,700 new millionaires every single day in America. What happens is when we think about money is scarce and it doesn't go on trees and we have this feeling that it's getting shrinking and it's going away, what we ask ourselves is this, how do I protect myself? How do I save this money? How do I make sure no one takes what I have? And that mindset keeps you on the sidelines. I want you to say, what, what about asking yourself a different question? Because here's the thing, if money doesn't disappear, if we know it's the same amount or more, can we agree on that? If it's not disappearing, then all it is is money is moving from one group of people to another group of people. Same amount of money, if there's still, let's say there's a hundred dollars and you're moving it around amongst a bunch of people, it's just who's getting the chunk of it. There's still a hundred dollars. The same sum total is there. It's just moving differently. So the question you should be asking yourself is not how do I hold on to what I have? How do I make sure I don't lose any of this? How do I make sure, you know, I, I keep the lights off at night? I'm not saying you shouldn't be conservative. What I'm saying is instead of having that mindset, what we should be saying is how do I become the person and, and this is one, write this down. I hope, you, I hope you're paying attention here today, guys. I hope you're not playing with social media, looking around, trying to focus on this because the question should be, how do I become the person where the money is moving to rather than away from, right? Just the same little, same thought process, just a different shift. Instead of, instead of thinking money is scarce and it's going away, no, there's 1,700 new millionaires a day in America alone being created right now. Money's not getting scarce. It's just those people, money is flowing to them and somebody else who's standing there trying to protect the little, protect themselves and, and, and being thinking a scarce mindset, their money is slowly going away. Now, I am surely not gonna be an advocate or say that you shouldn't be conservative, that you shouldn't save money, that you shouldn't be smart with your money. Of course you should, but here's what I know in the evolution of my life of going from that kid living <laughs> in a bathroom with my dad and not having money and all those things, and I, I'm not saying that to give you my, 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 my pitch or my story, but when I look back at when I tried to save and be conservative because I listened to you know, maybe grandparents that went through the depression or listened to people that you know, was like, you're crazy. What I realize is when you change your mindset on money, when you gain the capabilities, and when you take action, it is, in my opinion, you could disagree with me, in my opinion, money is easier to flow to you and make it than it is to save it. I even look at that in my business. I'll be like, hey, let's tighten up on expenses. And, and I'll look through all these things like, okay, if we tighten up all those because we're such a big company now, we could save this much. But if, we, if I write a new book, if I start a new campaign, if I do some more real estate deals, I can bring in this much with, a little, with the same amount of effort. Like save this much or just make this much. How the hell with it? Keep everybody there, keep the lights on. I'm gonna go make it over here. Now, I might be an extreme, but I'd like to give you a little bit of that. That if we stand on the sidelines envying those making more, being not jealous, but like desiring what other people have, but we're afraid because we wanna hold on to what we have and be afraid to take action, a lot of times those opportunities pass us by. Let's look at number two. We believe if we make it, that we're taking it 
from others or hurting others. And that's so false. But I want you to dig in and I'm not going to go deep on this one. I just want you to think about that because I will talk to people who are just anti money. They want to be in, it's, it's, it's this like two forces fighting inside their body. They want to start their own business. They want to be a capitalist. They want to be an entrepreneur. They want to take ownership of their life. They want to be in control while simultaneously they feel bad because they feel like if they're making too much of it, they're actually taking it from other people. They're not, you're not. In fact, I want you to have a new thought process on that. When you make money, if you want to change the world, if you want to make an impact on your family, if you want to make an impact on your church, if you want to make an impact on those that need it, those in Houston right now, those in Florida right now, or those struggling in the Midwest, or those struggling in Mexico, or around the world, or build a school in Africa, you have a desire, you have a, a, an obligation to make money. And in fact, when you make money, you help the world thrive. If you get the economy in your house thriving and you get that security and confidence and, and feel like I'm freaking safe no matter what, I'm making enough to live the lifestyle I want, I'm safe, you get to impact other people. Now, let's take it to another level. You start making more money. Are you actually taking it from people? Or if you get the economy in your house going and then you flourish in your house, do you maybe hire someone to take care of your lawn? Do you hire someone to take care of your house? Do you hire someone to make meals for you? Do you drop off more dry cleaning? Do you get a new car? Do you maybe upgrade in a house? Do you start leaving the air condition lower? Do you get a personal trainer? Do you get a natural path? Do you get a nutritionist? When you make money, you help the world grow. This is the complete opposite. It's completely false to think that if you make money, you're hurting someone else. When you make money and change the economy in your house, you can change the economy and affect the world. Someone who doesn't have a job mowing a lawn right now could have a lawn mowing company or business if you get out there and make more money and start spending it. So that whole, if I make money, I'm taking it someplace else is completely false. And in fact, I had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to, um, to spend uh, two separate years, a, a whole week with Richard Branson on his island. He, if you don't know who he is, he's the, he's the billionaire that started all the Virgin companies, Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, Virgin Mobile, all those companies, right? Um, I helped raise a million dollars for his charity and, and we got invited to go to his island and he came and, and it was all awesome to spend time with a billionaire. Um, and one morning I get up at five and everybody else didn't and he did and he saw me a couple mornings and he's like, hey, tomorrow morning meet me at the docks. So I ended up sailing around the island with him for about three hours. It was really cool, just me and him. So I'm learning how to pull the ropes and sail and all that stuff. I wouldn't tell him that I get motion sick and I wanted to throw up on my own face, but it didn't matter. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. Um, but I talked to him about this. And because he owns Virgin United and a lot of uh, uh, Virgin United is his charity arm and the one we raised a million dollars for. And he pays all the bills in the company. So you give him a million bucks, a million bucks goes on the ground to help people in need. Pretty cool. We built so many schools and did lots of great things. Um, but I talked to him about that feeling, like to get rid of the last little bit I had in me about maybe even feeling guilty about making money. And he said something pretty cool. He said, Dean, the way I look at it is we're all blessed with different abilities. We all are blessed with different gifts. Uh, I'm not Mother Teresa. He said, I'm not the person that will, you know, uh, spend uh, a month working at a soup kitchen, even though I'd love to, because my unique ability is to make money. And he said, let me ask you, Dean, if you, with your ability to make money and having this mindset of generating money, not be afraid to, to create profits and companies and all that stuff. He said, if you went to a soup kitchen and worked for two weeks, if that's all you could do, that's amazing. And the people that do it, that's their ability, that's their gift, that's what they're giving to God, the universe, back to society, back to a whole. He said, you could do that for two weeks or a month. Or what if you popped by that homeless shelter and dropped off a check for $50,000? Which one do you think you personally could make a bigger impact on that homeless shelter? He said, if you know how to make it, if you get the right mindset, if you get the right tools and you go to another level, you have an ethical obligation to make more and then do what you want. Give it all away if you want to. Help everybody, help your family, make sure your kids are okay, retire your parents, help your church out, build a school in Africa, donate it all to Houston or, or, or Florida, the next disaster that comes with people who really need it. 
And when he said that, it just, it gave me that freedom. That last little bit is, this is what I want to do. I want to make thriving companies that make money and I can do whatever I want with that money. And you get to do whatever you want. And if it's taking care of other people, helping people out, which is the greatest thing we're all put on this earth to serve. That's why we're here. When you, when you get past the worry of money, the next thing you think about is who can I give it to? Who can I serve? Once you have the security for yourself, it's about everybody else. So get that whole belief out of your system the last little bit of it that if you're making money you're hurting someone else because it's simply just a lie all right here's another one i love this from one of my uh, mentors dan sullivan says if you can cut a check for a problem you basically don't have that problem so the belief is money doesn't solve problems that's a lie Money solves a lot of problems. I'm not saying it's going to solve internal stuff, but when you can cut a check for a problem, the problem goes away. Let, right now, do me a favor. If you have something in your life that bugs you, stresses you, and you could simply cut a check for it and solve it, what would it be? Give me some answers right now, and I wanna tell you some. What about worrying about your retirement. What if you could cut a big enough check to put away that you knew no matter if you lived to be 100, you'd be okay, would that solve a problem? What if you knew you wanted to make sure your kids were okay and not spoil them, but give them money to, to start a new company, start a new business, to be okay when they want to buy their first home? Could you solve that problem? Do you have high credit card bills that you ran up a long time ago and medical bills or something that you could pay off? If you cut a check for that problem, would it go away? What about your parents getting older, uh, your parents getting older, and maybe still working because they don't have enough for retirement? What if you could cut a check and retire both your parents? When I did that, it was one of the greatest feelings in my life. What about that problem? What about college for your children? If you cut a check for that problem, would that problem go away? What about a spouse or yourself who's in a job that's in a job that's killing you, slowly just ripping away your soul? If you cut a check to get out of that job, would it solve that problem? You tell me. Am I, am I overstepping my boundaries here? Am I pushing your money limits right now of what you think about money? Money solves problems. Let's not, let's stop lying. Let's stop BSing ourselves. Let's stop with that feeling of, of like, no, if we didn't have money. If you are the biggest hearted person in the world and your whole life is spent in charity, if you could have money to help more people, it solves the problem that you desire the most. Stop having any negative feelings about money because it's not gonna hang out with you if you do. Do you understand those things? Uh, swim with dolphins, my mortgage, your school loans, uh, college for my son, bills, uh, retiring my parents, kids college, pay off a mortgage, credit card debt, um, pay off, yes, money solves problems. Now, I'm not saying that now you can snap your fingers and money just comes to you, but I'm saying it starts with this kind of mindset. And I wanna tell you a story. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard this, I, I haven't told it in a long time, but I wanna tell you when it really anchored in for me about can money solve problems. A few years back, I did a uh, family reunion in Cabo, Mexico, and all of us hadn't been together in one spot. And I'm talking about my mom and my stepdad and my sister and my brother-in-law and my nephews and my entire family. And, and it was just, it was so nice. I rented this house right on the ocean. It was amazing. The waves crashing every night. We got this big place. We had someone that helped us, you know, they cooked for us and they were catching tuna, coming in and making sushi with the tuna. It was like, I was so blessed. That kid that lived in a trailer park and lived in a bathroom and I'm there with my family. And it's just, it was just an unbelievable uh, trip. So halfway through the trip, my stepdad, who I've known since I was 10 uh, or nine, um, just sits really pale, passes out, and he's bleeding to death. We didn't know. We had to call the ambulance. He can't even sit up. He's so white. We get him to a hospital in Mexico. Thankfully, I had a friend down there that suggested what hospital to go to, but still, you're in a different country. There's no Medicaid. There's no insurance. There's none of that. And my stepdad is dying in front of us. He can't even sit up because there's not enough blood in his body. He lost like three quarters or as much blood as you could lose. And then they say you die. He lost about 10% more and he was bleeding internally. His colon burst. So the doctor comes out and says, your stepdad, your colon burst. Who's, who can I talk to? I'm like, you talk to me. He said, we don't take Medicaid. We don't take insurance and we need to do the surgery for me to get the right doctors in here to do it. We need $30,000 and we have to get paid up front. Now, would they have let my stepdad die? I don't, I, I'm hoping no, but the way they said it to me, literally we were talking, this is weird, but we like walked outside of the hospital. He wanted to talk to me. I was outside in the parking lot talking to him about this. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, no problem. I pulled out my black card and a, or my American Express card and I gave it to him. I said, just put it on here. I cut a check for that problem just like that. 
Now, I don't think they would have let him die. I, I doubt that. But that hit me so strong. It's like when you can cut a check for the problem, the problem goes away. Gave him the credit card. They went into the surgery. And, you know, they ended up taking out his large intestines and sewing him up. And we got him back, you know, after a week or two, we could get him back home. And he, this was four or five years ago. He's doing very well now. And, and not perfect when you lose your large intestines. But he's doing okay. And, and I share that because that's an extreme example of cutting a check for a problem. If you start thinking that, how many times did I say cut a check for a problem, problem goes away? I said it a lot because I want it to sink in. I want you, even if there's 10% resistance, your resistance is pushing money away from you. The fourth one, money doesn't make you a better version of yourself. Basically, can money make you a better person? Now, that's one that we can argue. Now, first I said money solves problems. You guys might be able to stomach that, but now you're saying, Dean, all right, money doesn't make you a better person. No, but it can. You know, I always say when people have money or drink, it, uh, drink alcohol, it's like a magnifying glass. You get a bigger version of who they are. Like, I'm just being honest. If someone's obnoxious and uh, broke or obnoxious when they're sober, you give them alcohol or money, they're super obnoxious in some cases. You have someone who's a jerk without money or a jerk when they're uh, sober, you give them some money or you give them some alcohol, sometimes it's the magnifying glass. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? But that's, in my opinion, that's a rare case. Can my money make you a better version of yourself? Okay, so let me ask you this. How much do you think about money? Like all the things I talk about, if money could cut a check for a problem, you guys, um, you guys put a lot of things down. What if you could cut a check for all of those things and they went away and you didn't feel choked by money anymore? What if, let's just imagine here for a moment. What if, um, okay, I want to envision, I was a note, I envision your future. Okay, what if you woke up tomorrow and the credit card was done, the bill was done, the mortgage was paid off, there's money away for your kid's college, um, you're a retiree and there was enough money there, mortgage problems, life problems, paying, retiring your parents, making sure your kids were okay, all the things that we mentioned, I don't wanna go through again. What if they were gone tomorrow morning? Can you feel that? Take a deep breath as if that was gone tomorrow. Now, again, I, I'm not, pitching anything here. I'm telling you, mindset starts the evolution of making more. This is not about me telling you how to get rich tomorrow morning, but you can't get wealthy or generate more money in your life until you get this crap out of your head. I hope that makes sense to you. But what if they were gone tomorrow? What if you got to a place where you never worried about money again? It was never a thought. You never woke up thinking about it. You never talked to your husband, your wife, your kids, your children, your friends, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins. You never even had a conversation about it. You just didn't think about it. Let me ask you, I'm, you're sitting in a room right now, wherever you are, you're sitting someplace watching me, whether live or watching the recording, you're watching me. When is the last time you thought about the oxygen in the room? When's the last time you went, wow, this air, really good. <laughs> Glad to have it keeping me alive, my lungs are processing it, it's going through my bloodstream, feeding my brain, glad my blood's oxygenized. No, you haven't thought about oxygen or air once since you've been watching me, why? Because there's an abundance of it, you stop thinking about it. Give somebody a straw, a tiny little cocktail straw, and try to breathe through that, all you would think about is oxygen. Squeeze someone's throat, the only thing you would think about is oxygen. We think about money because it's not all around us. It's not abundant. We're, we're breathing through a little cocktail straw, right? So I want you to imagine tomorrow morning you woke up. Really think about this. Do this with me. You're waking up. How would you breathe? How would you feel? What weight would be off your shoulders if money was no longer something you thought about? You cut checks for the problems in your life and they're gone. And now you're left with you. You're left with you. How could you be a better version of yourself? Would you get more, would you get therapy? Would you join a mastermind? Would you get a counselor? Would you get a coach? Would you get a nutritionist? Someone to help you with your diet? Would you get a personal trainer? Would you spend more time at church or go deeper on your spirituality? How often would you exercise? Would you get some courses on how to be better in your relationship and stop screwing up the things that we mess up all the time? Would you be a better parent? Would you coach? 
one of their, your kids or your grandchildren? Or would you take your nephew or niece someplace? Would you do more surprises? Would you stop being on your phone all the time? Would you stop being distracted in life? Could you work on your ADD? Could you work on your overwhelm? Could you work on the anxiety that you have that you don't even tell anybody you have? Could you work on the stress that you have that could slowly be eating away at you and killing you? I'm not trying to do anything except give you a different mindset and a foundation to see that if you get money out of the way, there is a better version of you waiting. I, I wanna tell you in my life, I get to coach my daughter's softball team. I get to coach my son's flag football team. I get to coach my son's baseball team. I get to go my, watch my daughter when she has dance, either practice. I, I don't just go to games, I go to practices. I just do. How long are they gonna be here? They're eight and 10. I'm gonna blink and they're gonna be gone. I'm, stu I'm sucking up as much as I can. I couldn't do that if I, didn't, if I worried about money. My health, I'm, I'm gonna be 50 next year. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm not bragging, but I, I get to have a natural path. I get to study nutrition. I get to go to the best doctors. I get to work out every single day. If I want a personal trainer, I got one just like that. I get to work on me. I read a book every 10 days. I go to counseling. I'm friends with some of the most incredible people, Tony Robbins, Dr. Daniel Amen, all these incredible people that I have in my life. I jump on a plane and go see them all the time because I want to gain their knowledge and their wisdom and I want to share what I've learned. So many things that I'm sharing with you, I'm blessed to hang. I mean, in, in four days from now, right behind the camera is my is my uh, where I do my masterminds and I'm doing my Genius X group where people pay me a hundred grand to come in. They come in three times a year. All the stuff that I learn at that group or I learn out in the world, I bring to you, I bring to them, right? I get to go do that. I'm a part of masterminds. I give Dan Sullivan $25,000 a year. I give Joe Polish $25,000 a year. I give other people, t I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on mastermind to gain the wisdom because I'm not the guy that wants to go to college for six years. Just give me a weekend, give me all the stuff that works and I'll go freaking do it. I'm not the, I'm, I'm not the, I, 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 I know the rabbit and the, and the tortoise, right? I want to be the rabbit and the tortoise combined. I want to go fast but steady and consistent. How do you do that? By being smart like you and getting the, gaining the unfair advantages from people who've done it before. The hardest way to learn in life is learning through your own trial and error. We know that's dumb, right? So I get to do those things. I get to work on, what about you? I get to work on finding what my purpose is, what charities I like, what makes me tick. You know, being in the second half of my life, like I want to know what the hell I'm here for. I want to know my relationship with God on a deeper level or my spirituality. I want to learn to meditate on a better level. I want to learn to have gratitude journals every day in my life and every night of my life. I want to do all these things. And when you get money out of the way, you're allowed to. How about helping others? Who do you want to help? Would you be a better version of yourself if you could cut checks or, or be a part or jump on a plane and go dig a well in Africa or help lay the bricks of a school someplace or, or help rebuild in Houston or in Florida? Does that make you a better version of yourself? And what about growth? Like I said, how much knowledge would you get? Who would you pay to, to coach you? Who would you pay to be a part of, right? Those are the types of things I want you to think about is how could money make you a better version of you. Again, this is all foundational stuff. You know, if you're a part of any of my courses, my real estate course, how to make money online, or just getting the foundation of success, this is all the principles. But if you don't have this mindset, if you're carrying over a mindset from your parents or grandparents who, you know, uh, went through the depression, if you're carrying on, uh, you know, negative beliefs and wrong beliefs about money, you, you'll just wonder, man, I was this close to making it so many times. Why am I still stuck in this job? Why did my friends get ahead? Why did he get ahead? She get ahead? Why did Dean's other students get ahead? A lot of times it's as simple as your relationship with money. So I do a little exercise here. And this one I'm going to make up on the fly because I have some other things I want to talk about on, on how to make it. But I want to talk about some things for you. You know, uh, if you're a part of my group, uh, read my books, watched any of the previous trainings in here, I am huge on where it is do you want to go? What is your vision? So what I'd love for you to do right now is let's talk about money and get you feeling what it would like be like to make more of it. Um, and, I, and I'm not just, just let me share something here. This isn't about like the secret. I'm not dogging the secret. I think it inspired so many people, it's incredible, but I'm not just gonna talk to you about, let's dream about what it feels like to make that money and it'll just come to us. It's not gonna just come to you. I, I'm just telling you by experience, you can meditate on it, you can fantasize about it, you can think through it. You gotta get those feelings and then use those feelings for gaining the knowledge and taking action. 
That's the best way I could describe it. But if you don't feel it first, you'll be afraid of the knowledge and afraid of the action and you'll sit on the sidelines and another opportunity will go by. Does that make sense? Okay, I want you to do this. Right now, whether you have a piece of paper or not, I want you to think, at least think through it. Let's pretend it's a year from now. And we just killed four beliefs. If it's a year from now and you realize money isn't scarce, you, you realize that you making money doesn't take it away from someone else. You realize that money does solve problems and you realize money can allow you to be a better version of yourself. If you can think through those glasses, take off the glasses of any negative feelings about money, any negative beliefs about money, or you're not rich enough, or you're not smart enough, or you don't have enough time, or you didn't go to enough college, or money, it takes money to make money. If you throw all that crap away, and you just put on these new glasses that we're talking about today, and start thinking about it is one year from today, and money is no longer an issue in your life. I'm not going to even talk about how you're making it. That has nothing to do with it right now. I want you to just start thinking. If money was, no, it's a year from now. We're back here. You're, we're still hammering away every month. We're doing these trainings and money is no longer an issue. Piece of paper on your phone or watch this again and do it if you're in a place where you can't write right now. What does your life look like if money is no longer an issue, something you think about. It's like the oxygen in this room. And I would just start writing down, what do you look like when you look in the mirror? Are you in the best shape of your life? What's your body look like? What's your confidence level like? What about when you walk in a room? What about when you're driving in your car? What do people see when they look at you? Do they think, oh my God, did you get thinner, taller? Did you get a tan? You're working out? Did you get plastic surgery because you look younger? How's your, your confidence, your quiet confidence? How's your courage level? How's your relationship like? What does your husband look like? Look at you like? Or what do you, how does your wife look at you? How does your, how does your kid, how do your kids look at you? How do you feel internally? Do you feel like the man of the house that took care of, like the woman who can take care of herself or take care of the whole family if you want to? How do your friends look at you? How do you feel? Like what you feel, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. You wake up and you go, I'm not thinking about money anymore. What am I gonna do today? Who are you helping? Who are you cutting checks for? What are you doing on a daily basis? How are your, how's the intimacy in your life? How's the passion? How healthy are you? Not just looking good in the mirror, but if your children or grandchildren want to run, you, run a race with you, can you go, eh, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, we'll, we'll do pretty good keeping up. I don't know what it is to you, but if you start fantasizing about it and you start setting a vision of where you want to go and not what you don't want, not what lack of money, not what trying to hold on to the last money you got, not standing on the sidelines, not being afraid, not thinking it's for other people. When you start realizing it's for you and you look through the lenses of what we're talking about today, what does that look like for you? And start writing those down right now. Just write them down or type them in your computer or, or do this exercise again. But it's a year from now and money's no longer an issue. Who are you? Allow yourself to feel that. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know if you're in, in tough pain, going through a divorce, going through a bankruptcy. Uh, you feel like you're too old. You feel like you're too young. You feel like you live in the wrong place. You feel like, you, Dean, this is great for everybody else, but you don't understand what, I go, what I'm going through. I don't know if that's what you believe, but I've been lucky enough to watch people from every walk of life, from everywhere in the world, starting with different backgrounds, starting with the most hellish past, some that break my heart, I could cry thinking about it. And when they, they got it, they just got it and started attracting money, started attracting relationships. Their first deal happened or their new business started. And a lot of it is this foundational stuff we're talking about right here, right now, today. So what does it look like? Tell me right now, give me some comments if it's a year from now and money is no longer an issue in your life. Who are you? Tell me, who are you? What do you look like? What do you feel like? Name, name a word. Are you courageous? Are you confident? Are you exhilarant? Are you excited? Are you enthusiastic? If you're feeling alive, if you get a better connection with God, is your spirituality on another level? Are you meditating? Are you waking up? What are you doing? Share, let everybody else see. 
That's the kind of feeling I want you guys to have. Because when you start with that, and then you gain the success components that are in my book, Millionaire Success Habits, and my trainings, and all the things we're sharing here, then when you plug whatever it is, real estate, your own business, online, stock, whatever business you plug on top of that, you have the opportunity for exponential growth. That's why people go, oh my God, how did she start that new business six months ago and she's killing it? I've been wanting to do my own business for years because of this. Remember, 80% of your success lies in here. Okay, so I want you to think about a little, a couple little hacks here, a couple of things that I've known have been significant for my business and my companies in this journey of generating, I'd say upwards, it's probably past crazy, a, a billion dollars in my life through my companies and my brands. That's not all profit, I didn't get to keep all that. Um, it's big companies, big businesses with all my real estate ventures and, and book ventures and trainings and all these things. It's unbelievable to even say that out loud. But I've learned a lot along that journey and some of the foundational stuff that people miss when I see companies struggling. When I have my 100K group and my 25K group and the groups I go to, why are some companies struggling and some companies thriving? And I really boil those down and I'm a simple thinker. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not, uh, there's so many people so much smarter than me and I had to run a business. I just, I'm so good at uh, understanding people that I've been able to thrive because of that. So I want you to think about this. Know who you are, whether you own, want to start, you're a salesperson, network marketer, you're in a job, um, you want to, you already own your own business, you want to make more profits. One of the, the key things that we forget, and even if you're doing it here, you need to do it on another level, is know your prospect better than anyone else in your space. So what do I mean by that? Live inside your prospect's mind. Live inside your potential's mind, okay? So I'd love for you to think about who is your ideal, who is the avatar? Who is the avatar that you are trying to sell or if you're in a job, who's the avatar, what's the avatar, you know, what's your boss? Or if you're in your own business, who are you serving? What needs and wants are you supplying to who? Who is the perfect person? And I want you to think about writing down who the avatar is, the perfect client. And because what happens is we live in our own minds so much, we forget that we're serving someone else. And remember this, people buy from you and will buy what they want not what they need. Now remember that, people buy what they want, not what they need. People need, a lot of people need to stop eating sugar, need to stop drinking, need to stop having too much caffeine, need to lose weight, need to get to the gym, need to fix their relationship, need to be more reliable, need to be better with their time, but people only do something about it when they want to, okay? So remember the difference between need and want. You wanna serve those wants, a lot of times serve them what they want and then give them what they need. Does that make sense? Serve them what they want, give them what they need. But I want you to think about this. Who is your avatar? Who is your ideal client? And here's some things that most people forget. Yeah, we go, if you're running Facebook ads or advertising, you're like, that's our demographic. No, deeper than demographic. Demographic, that's, that's old school, you know, building a brand and brand recognition. The hell with brand recognition. You want sales and you want to serve people that need what you're offering. Whether you're in a job, whether you're in network marketing, whether you're in sales, whether you want to start a business or whether you want to own it. So I want you to ask yourself these four questions and write it down. No matter if you're starting in real estate, anything that you're doing, write these down. Who are the people that, who are the prospects? Who do you want to serve? Or who are you serving? Who are they? Are they 40 to 60 year, 60 year old women? Are they 60 to 90 year old men? Or is it everybody? But narrow it down on who, you're, who is it that you serve. Second, what do they fear? What do they fear? What is it that you are providing for them? Whether it's a product, a service, a house, a car, a, a, a product online, your book that you're gonna write, what do they fear? And write down what they fear. And how do you help them overcome those fears and fix those fears? Next is, what do they desire? What do they want? Why, do they, why would they want your product? Why would they want their service? Not just because they need it. So many people create products and go, this is revolutionary. And I say, why? It's because everybody needs it. Yeah, everybody needs it. In America, there's too many people overweight. There's too many people who spend too much money. They all need to stop spending in some cases. They all need to get out of a job that's killing them. They all need to lose five pounds, 10 pounds around the belly. They don't need to get to the gym more, but they're not doing it. So don't tell me you are gonna change the world because you prevent, you created something so amazing and they need it. They're gonna come to you. No, they're not. 
not without you understanding how they feel and providing this cure for what they want. So if you know who they are, you know what they fear, and then you know, write down what do they desire. You know, if you're in a weight loss product, who are they? It's people overweight. What do they fear? Not looking good, not being sexy to their partner, dying early, being a bad example to their kids and grandchildren, getting diabetes, losing a leg. I don't know, there's some big fears about being obese, right? Name them. And then what do they desire? They desire to look better, feel better, run upstairs, run with their grandchildren or children or friends and family, be sexier, be more passionate, not be out of breath, not be sick, get off all the pills that are in your, in your, in your medicine cabinet. That's what they desire. So live into that feeling. And what are their obstacles? Their obstacles, maybe they don't have a lot of money or maybe nobody in their family supports them. Or maybe, you know, they, they don't know the difference of eating healthy and not, or they're on a tight budget or they don't have time. If you know who they are, what they fear, what they desire and what their obstacles are, you are doing better than all of your competitors because so many people get lost in my demographic and, and people and, 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 and people become robots. They don't become feeling, touching people. Listen, what I'm sharing with you right now, I have some notes, but I don't have a teleprompter. I don't have a script. I want to serve you in a way. I want to know who, I know who you are. I know what you fear. That's why I talked about this today. I think I really know what you desire and I know your obstacles. And if you listen, Listen to what I shared today. I did exactly what I'm teaching you. I know who you are. I know what you want. I know what you're afraid of. I know what your obstacles. I've been at every level of where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. I've been broken and broken. I've made a whole bunch of money. I've been everywhere in between. So I can lean into that. I can do that without a script. I can do that without needing teleprompter and all that because I know this about you and I want to serve you. And I hope you feel my authenticity. I hope you feel this is coming from the purest place in my heart. And I hope you realize what I'm sharing. It's not just crap I needed to put together. This, this is my life. This is, could be yours, right? So think about that in any business you're in. If you have that little thing, again, whether you want to start, think about who those people are going to be. If you're in business, are you really going deep enough on those feelings? If you're in network marketing, if you're in sales, if you have a job, do you know your surroundings at that level that can allow you to be the one that gets to the top of the pyramid? Once you understand who the people are, what they fear, what they desire, and what their obstacles are, and you serve that, and you give them what they want and supply them what they need, and someone becomes your client, how do you, and I want you to think about this for future trainings, how do you over deliver to them in such a massive way and build reciprocity that they wouldn't dare think of going anyplace else but you. And one step higher, they appreciate that you over-delivered so much that they recommend you to all their friends, family, and wherever they can. How do you think through those? How do you make someone feel in a way that they got, I hope you being a part of this group, that you will tell friends. I hope that you'll be a, a group member forever. I hope that you, when you get done, you're like, damn, that was worth every bit and so much more. I got to tell friends and family. I hope you share my comments on Facebook. I hope you go to Facebook and like my stuff. I want all that stuff. I want my business to keep growing because I want all the same things that you want. And I want to keep growing because I want to serve more people and help more people. So I want to over deliver to you. I want to, I want you to come and say, this is going to be good. And when you leave, go, damn, that wasn't good. It was great. That's my desire. How can you do that? in your future business, your current business, in your sales business, in your network marketing, in your job that you're at? How do you over deliver? Not worry about what people are gonna get back to you. This is about you giving to the world. What was it, uh, Jim Rohn? Was it Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar said, you wanna become a millionaire? Help a whole bunch of people get wealthy and you'll, it'll happen as a byproduct. He said it more eloquently, but uh, yeah. It's an awesome ple uh, pleasure and a privilege to be here and serve. And uh, go out and kill it. Be the best you. The world deserves that of you. All right, see you guys. What's up, what's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them, and I'll see you there.